Are you a dinosaur? Yes. Are you sure you're a dinosaur? Yes. Are you sure that you're not just a man with a dinosaur hat on? Oh. People pretending to be other people. In the cybersecurity world, that is known as impersonation. But fortunately for you, if you're a Microsoft 365 user, there is a feature called impersonation protection. And today, I'm going to show you how to configure it. But before we start, my name is Jonathan Edwards. I'm a business IT consultant from the UK. We help businesses all over the world with the Microsoft 365. So a little bit more about impersonation. A fraudster will research your business. They'll look at your website. They'll look at all your business profiles on social media and they'll build up a picture. They'll know who the CEO is. They'll know who works in accounts and then they can start plotting, trying to take money from you. Then they will create a fake email address which closely matches your business. So let's stick with the dinosaur theme. Pretend your CEO is called Rex and his email address is rex at dinosaur.com. The fraudster might create an email address that is rex at dinosaurs.com. Very, very similar. Then they'll use the fake email address and send an email to someone in your business. Probably someone in the accounts department. So the person in your accounts department, let's call them Dipley Vocus, receives an email from Rex and it says, please pay this amount of money into this bank account. Why are you doubting Rex? Rex is the CEO of the company. Rex always asked me to make these payments. So I'm gonna go ahead and make that payment. But unfortunately, it wasn't the real Rex that sent that email. It was the fraudster. Now you might be sat there thinking, there is no way I will be so foolish as to make that mistake. But hundreds and hundreds of people make that mistake every single day. Now, if you're a Microsoft 365 user, fortunately, help is at hand because Microsoft 365 has a feature called impersonation protection. Now, impersonation protection comes included with a product called Defender for Office 365. Now, Defender for Office 365 comes in two flavors, Plan 1 and Plan 2. Now, Defender for Office 365 Plan 1 comes included with Microsoft 365 Business Premium, which I recommend that all small businesses buy. Now we've got the license out of the way, you might want to know how to configure impersonation protection. Great, you've come to the right place. Let's jump onto that computer behind me and I'll show you. So to access the settings for impersonation protection, you've got to log into the Microsoft 365 admin portal. Now you can see that I've got access to the admin portal here because I've got a little admin tab there. So I'll launch that. And then what I need to do is click on show all and we'll get a lot more options. And I want to scroll down to the admin centers down here. The one that I want is called security. Okay, so what I need to do then is go down to email and collaboration and then policies and rules. And then I need to click on threat policies. And what this is, impersonation is part of the anti-phishing policies. So I'll click on there. Now, what it should have is a default anti-fish policy that Microsoft has created. I always recommend that you create your own. And if you're interested, I have got a video all about configuring protection policies in Defender for Office 365. But for the purpose of this demo, we're just going to configure the default fish policy. So I'll click on there and this little box will pop out here. Now, what I want to do is in the phishing threshold and protection, just want to scroll down to the bottom where it says edit protection settings. And here you can see we've got a section dedicated to impersonation. So it starts there. Okay. So I'll just scroll down a little bit there. So the first thing you have to do is enable users to protect. Now, if I'm honest, I don't really like this. I think that Microsoft should just protect all users from impersonation. The fact that you've got to enable it and then add the users that you want to be included, I don't think is a good system design, but it's what we're working with. So what I'll do there is I will tick that box and say enable users protect. 
and then I will click on manage senders. So what I now need to do is add the key people in my organization to this list. So I'll click on add user. And then what I'll do here is I'll type in, so I want to protect myself, which is Jonathan Edwards. And then it'll show me here. So that's my email address. I'll click on add. I also want to protect Rishi Sunak. Again, this is just a test tenant. It's not the real Rishi Sunak. And I will click on that. And what I've got to do is add all my users. So as I say, it's a bit of a pain, but it's just something we have to do. Once we're happy, which I am now, I will click on add and I will click on done. And you can see I'm now protecting two out of my allocated 350 users. The next section is to enable the domains you want to protect. So I will tick this box and then I get a couple of options. Now it's either or of these options. The simple way is just to simply include the domains you own. So if I click on here, it takes me to the domain screen of Microsoft 365 and it shows me the domains that I've got in Microsoft 365. So the simple way is just to select that and all these domains listed here will be protected. If you've got custom domains elsewhere, if there's other domains you want to protect, what you would do is uncheck that, you would check that box there and then you would manually enter the domain domains into this screen here so it's an either or but just to get you started i recommend that you go for this option here now we've got a section where we can add trusted senders and trusted domains so these senders and these domains will never be flagged for impersonation attacks so what kind of scenarios would you use this setting well let's stick with a the dinosaur theme your ceo is called rex and obviously rex has a business email address but occasionally when he's at home, and I don't recommend he does this, but occasionally when he's at home, he will email his PA from his personal Gmail account. Now, because that name will be the same, Rex's name will appear, that might be flagged as an impersonation attack. And Rex might get frustrated because his Gmail email emails aren't getting through to his PA. So what we would do here is we would add Rex's Gmail into here so it's never flagged for impersonation that's a good example how that would work so come out of there and just come out of there and then we've got a couple of advanced options here based on ai so i recommend you switch these both on this is all about mailbox intelligence so pretend that your ceo again is called rex okay and you also deal with a third party company and the name of that ceo is also called rex when the third party company emails your company, that might be flagged for impersonation because it's the same name. But Mailbox Intelligence will kick in here and it will say something like, well, we've always emailed this Rex at this third party company, so it's okay. So I recommend that these settings are switched on. And once you're happy with all those, you can simply click on save. And that in a nutshell is how to configure impersonation protection in Microsoft 365. So there you have it, impersonation protection, a feature in 365 that lots of businesses aren't using, but should do. I hope you've enjoyed this video, look forward to seeing you again soon.